Whoo wee. All right, here we go. I know a lot of people have been asking for this video. We're finally doing the AC install permanently in the F-150. Uh, sorry it took so long. We had some things come up, but here we are. So I want to start off by saying this is not our original idea. Uh, Mr. Clayton over here, the mastermind behind Electricals, found this on the F-150 forum. There's a couple fellers in there and they, uh, they did, they the did all, all the legwork on this. We just <laughs> are able to understand the circuit. So here we are. Um, what Clayton has built here on the bench is the easiest way to possibly do this. Um, I will put a link in the comments to the forum if y'all would like to read it. I will also link these terminals on eBay that he found to make this nice and easy. So what have we done here? All right, so same as the original setup we had, the goal here is to create additional resistance across these pins. Uh, these pins connect to the thermistor that goes to the EBAP, uh, which is basically just a resistor that changes its value based on the temperature. And by adding resistance here, we're essentially modifying the value of the resistance off the thermistor so that way we can trick it into going a little bit lower. Um, so the reason this looks all crazy is the goal here is to get this to just click right in without cutting any OEM connections. So you can just drop this whole thing in with the existing connections without having to modify anything. So if you want to remove it and go back to stock, there's no problems. Um, so essentially what we have here is the connection with the thermistor to the uh, back to the computer is using these pinouts. So we just went on eBay and bought a male and female variant of this pin setup and we have uh, trimmed them and soldered them so when they're connected together this is just this right here is really just making it so these got this connection stays just like it is in the truck but we ran some extra wires off that same connection so we can put a resistor in between um, here our resistor is actually a potentiometer so a variable resistor and then we have a switch here so like the form will indicate if you look through when it gets really cold outside, this may not help your situation. It may make it worse. It may freeze your EVAP up. So when it's really hot like it is here now, we can flip it on and we can adjust the, the potentiometer to modify that setting. And when the temperature drops below like 80 or back to you know normal, not summer temperatures, you can use the toggle switch and click it off. And then kind of like I said before, if you put it in your truck, you want to sell it, or you decide you don't want to do it anymore, you just take the whole thing out and just reconnect the original terminals which we'll see here in a minute. No harm, no foul. So before we throw it in, we're just gonna give it a quick test to make sure that the circuit works. So first we're gonna measure the resistance off the potentiometer. I'm gonna figure out how to use the potentiometer. So we've got it set at right around 300 right now. My shaky hands keep bouncing off, but right around 300. Um, so we're gonna adjust that. In the forms, if you read through them, you'll see that 300 is kind of a sweet spot for a lot of people seems to vary, but that's where we're going to start. So then we want to go back down to our pins here. We see the switch is turned on, so we would expect to see some resistance down here. And again, shaky Start hands. to see the same resistance. Same resistance, yeah. Correct. And there we are. There we right go. at 300. Same now, resistance. Now, while you're still holding that, I'm going to flip the switch Let me get it while in. he holds it on there so you can see while it's plugged in, if you turn it off, now it's going to drop to no resistance. Boom, bam, back but, to factory setting. And then the most important thing with that switch setup is this has to be connected. So yes. if you were to wire this to where the resistance is in line, then when you disconnect it, then your thermistor is not gonna be connected anymore and you got no AC. So this Correct. allows you to achieve really everything you want. Everything in one go. Yeah. So we are going to go over to the truck and show you where you install it. All right, here we are in the truck. So you can see we have the glove box drop down. Uh, you literally just squeeze these two tabs on the side at the same time and it'll fold, fold down. This plug right here runs up on the top side. You can see up here. Um, it's actually like clicks into a little click on the top of the evaporator box. Let me see if I can get it up here with a flashlight, um, which I pulled it loose when we were doing our testing video, which if you haven't watched that short, I recommend it. That's where the proof of concept is. But we yanked it down from up here. And now we have this female and this male exposed. So we're gonna plug into both sides there and then temporarily we're just gonna zip tie it up in here. You can do that permanently, but I'm gonna 3D print a bracket that will click on to the back of the glove box for it to ride on. But I'm gonna let Clayton in here and he's gonna go ahead and click these in. All right, so make this connection here. This will be interesting too, because we have not tested this. So if I ordered the wrong thing, you're gonna find out 
Oh, the, the plugs? Yeah. No, they, they look great. They look identical. Also, it does not matter which end you wire to where. It's all just one circuit. Now we're going to see if we can drape this through. Yeah, so the idea here for our finished install is to 3D print a bracket without having to modify the glove box at all. That will click on to this back wall and then let those just sit in the glove box. So when you want to turn it on, turn it off, you just reach in and hit the switch. I mean, honestly, right now they could probably ride in there. I'm just a little concerned about that potentiometer bouncing with vibrations and changing. Yeah, so if you get this, what you can do, what a lot of people do, will just put a little bead of hot glue or something in there if you want to freeze it in place. We're still kind of trying to brainstorm an idea to stop it from vibrating while we go through adjustments, but ultimately the goal here is to find the perfect sweet spot and then just put a little bead of hot glue here somewhere and freeze it in place or do something a little fancier so maybe we can free it up again if we need to. So and then again, our whole, our whole goal is to not modify a single thing on this truck. If you want to drill holes in the back of your glove box and just mount the switches there, you can totally do that. Yep. We're just trying to do it with no modifications. I'm guessing there's a lot of people out there like me where maybe one day you want to sell the truck and instead of having to explain what's going on in there, you could just tell the person what you did and say if you don't want to do it, take it out. If you like it, great. And then I'm going to start this in the off position because we're going to, after uh, we connect the scanner up, we're going to start the truck, we're going to get into the scanner to see what temperature the EVAP is reading, and then we're going to click the switch on to confirm that the resistance is changing that value. And here we are. So if you don't have a scanner or a friend with a scanner or something, you can do this. It's just going to take a lot more trial and error. So what we're going to do to make it a lot faster is I have this nice nifty scanner. I'm in the HVAC module now. You'll come down and see this evaporator temperature. So it wants to, in the programming, stay at about 50 degrees on the evaporator. The reason we're doing this is because that equates, which is where it stays, about 58 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit coming out of there, which just isn't cold enough for AC, especially whenever you get temperatures up in the mid hundreds. So what we're gonna do now is, this is, our setup is off. So what we expect to see and if you watch the short, you'll see it there too. Whenever he turns this on, we want to bump this up by about 15 degrees. So I want this to jump all the way up to 65 degrees, give or take, based off his adjustment. So you want to flip it on, Clayton? We jumped up seven degrees. So let's turn the knob. I don't know what direction it is. I don't know, I'll tell you. Yeah, just start turning, I'll tell you. We're going the wrong way. So let's tank this up to about 65. You got a little more to go. A little more to go, a little more to go, right there. Back just a hair. All right, we're gonna set that right there. That takes us up 14.4 degrees through the resistor. So the way this works, and I probably won't video it because um, you can go check out the short. I'll put a link up at the top here. We got that cool little thing now. But uh, the way this works is you have to drive the truck around. It, when it sees a crazy increase like that, it doesn't immediately go into effect. So you gotta go drive it around, let the truck adapt to it. Once it sees it constantly, it's gonna start dropping this back down, looking for that 50 number. When it does, we're gonna get these temps down into the 40s. So uh, we're gonna zip tie these up for now and maybe go for one little quick test drive and just see how much we can affect it. But the more you drive it, the more it gets used to it, the more it's gonna push for that to be 50 and the colder it's gonna get out of your vents. We drove down to our gas station, got some Gatorades. It's like a mile and turned around. It's already starting to learn. So you'll see here the evaporator temperature has dropped from 64 to 57. So it's pushing it. If you look at the vent tip, I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but it has fallen from 60 to the high 40s or 50 degrees, give or take, and it's steady dropping. So there's your proof of concept. Uh, you just gotta fine dial it in from here and we're gonna play with it a little more and then call it good for now. Come on. All right, here we are back at the shop. Got the F-150 back in here. We're gonna do one more little repair, but the AC is working perfectly. So quick little recap here for one in the description section and I'll put a little tag up here at top. I'll have Amazon links for a vent thermometer, which is the most important thing you need to have. And then I'll have the on off switch in there as well. I'll have an eBay link for the male and female plugs to make it all super easy. And uh, yeah, also we have the super like function available now. So if anybody wants to throw a super like on here, that'd be cool. I don't really know what it does. Uh, like the video, subscribe if you want to see more stuff. We do lots of F-150 repairs, lots of redneck stuff. Uh, hit the thumbs up so more people can see it if it helps you. But quick little recap here. If you want to take it over here, Clayton. What about Gavin? Uh, we're going to just walk back over the circuit, how it works, the things that are important. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're gonna move over to Clayton. He's gonna give you a quick little recap on how this all works again, just for a basic understanding. 
so. All right, so I have anything to show, so I'm yeah. my hand here. So in the truck, there is the evaporator coil. That's what makes the coldness, the air blows over. Inside that, there is a thermistor or a thermometer, if you want to call it. That thing tells the computer how cold it is. The computer uses how cold it is to make a determination if it should continue to cycle the compressor um, or not, which is gonna affect if it warms up or cools down. Um, so what we have done is after reading F-150 forms and all the good work those folks have done in there, they've determined that if you add some additional resistance onto that thermistor, you can modify the value of the temperature that's being seen by the computer, which would make sense because a thermistor just produces a resistance value that the computer uses to determine the temperature. So what we've done is bought OEM connectors to essentially splice into that connection for the thermistor without going away from stock. And we've added a potentiometer and a switch that goes across those um, two pins and it allows us to add resistance and adjust it because it's a potentiometer. And then the switch is because if you go through the F-150 forms, it'll be linked in the description, you'll see that some folks had some problems uh, once summer ended and they got into kind of fall, like 80 degree area, where it was running their compressor too cold and it was getting close to freezing, which you don't want. So by having the switch, you can disconnect that additional resistance at will and go back to a completely stock setup. And you can click the switch back on and have your potentiometer and allow you to modify it. So really the closest you can get to like an OEM-like connection. Awesome. Is there so, that there? yeah, so the only important things to note here, I guess that were skipped over, is one, uh, it takes a minute for the computer to learn, so you just gotta drive it around. If you don't have a computer like we do to watch the EVAP temperature and see how it's adjusting, you just do it by feel. So, you just do small increments at a time. Um, if at any point you happen to freeze up your lines, just make sure you kill everything. The computer will sense the pressure buildup and it will turn everything off anyway, but to be safe, kill everything if you see freezing temperatures and then adjust accordingly. But there's just a lot of a lot of play, a lot of test driving, but you can tune it in very, very good. So, come on. Quick little tidbit here. Uh, I don't know where I'm gonna piece this in, so if it seems kind of weird in the video, it's because this is an afterthought. Uh, I do want to point out that with the AC adjustment, Yes, it makes it blow colder, which is awesome. And it's great from the stock performance, but make sure your AC system is actually working correctly before you go to that extreme. Um, I mean, we had other issues that we addressed before that. His expansion valve was out, so his fan was constantly running. So that's been replaced. Everything's back down. We checked all the lines and flushed them. So we everything's working optimally. We just dropped down the vent temp from there. So this is not a fix for if something else is wrong. Yeah, the rule, the rule of thumb is that if your AC is 50 degrees or higher and you know that the system is functioning properly, then you're probably a good candidate for this. If you're below 48 degrees already, you may just be really lucky and you have a good AC. However, you can still do this. And the general consensus is that you should be very aware of how charged your system is. Um, granted, we didn't necessarily do that, but we had just recently recharged my system, so we knew pretty generally how I, much yeah, was I in there. Yeah, I charged it to the exact weight. But yeah, so, yeah. so we knew, <laughs> but there is, um, and you'll see it in F-150 forms if you go in there, but there is some consensus that your results may be dependent on if you are exactly full from what the manufacturer says, or if you're slightly over full. Not that those are necessarily a problem, but they may impact your results. So keep that in mind, but absolutely, you want to make sure that your system is functioning properly because if it's not, this may just blow it up quicker. Correct.